testing. <laughs> I can't get it right today, can I? So much going on. All right. Uh, welcome. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Uh, way too much going on today. What do I mean by that? Well, I am, well, I have to sew 20 strips of fabric like this so that we have markers for our event on Saturday. Um, the event on Saturday is this big Manchester Grows event, and we need some kind of identifier for our volunteers to know that they are the volunteers. And so I'm just taking green fabric and sewing them into strips because it's the fastest thing I could think of to do that would work for us. Um, I don't know. I, I have 17 done. I need to do like at least three more. Um, cool, cool, cool. And uh, yeah, it's work. It's def definitely work. Some of them are patchwork. It's okay. Um, I'm running out of green fabric. I think the last few are going to have to be made um, with flannel here. That's the only way I can see getting it done because I, uh, yeah, because that's life. Hi, Lady Verona. How are you? Um, yeah, so my microphones are doing something weird. I don't know exactly what, but it was weird. So I was, I was testing. Only this one's working right now, so I feel weird about that. Um, usually I have three to choose from, but the rest are not turning on. Um, but I have a lot going on today. Uh, what else? Yeah, that big event. Oh, I'm starting the basic work on a mural on Friday, this Friday, uh, for, there's the Piscataqua Trail that runs from like the baseball stadium downtown uh, to the west side out Goffstown Way. And there's this bridge that's kind of drab and beat up and ugly. And we're gonna paint it and make it beautiful. Uh, Manchester Moves is sponsoring that and um, yeah, I'm just the grunt work. I'm, I'm gonna use my paint sprayer, lay down some really basic colors, that kind of thing, uh, get it ready to go for, for the artists. Um, but there's like no access to it. You know, it's all private property. So I was spending the, the time right before this uh, calling around to the private properties that are right next door, asking if I could park my Prius there so I can use my Prius as a generator and run uh, my paint sprayer off of that because it would be so much faster than rolling it. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, I did not expect the city to move that fast on uh, thinking of the word using high pressure water to clean the surfaces. Can't think of the word pressure wash, thank you. Uh, to pressure wash the surface and to prime the surface. So that's been done and I did not expect it to be done that fast. So I am jumping in on Friday to do that. So that should be a thing. Um, I'm, it's fun. I'm, I'm excited. I don't usually do murals, so I'm excited for this experience. It should be adorable. I'm getting to work with really cool people, uh, really cool artists. Um, it's going to be awesome. I am also still making my bike bags. Now, I am going to admit totally here to being a really bad streamer. Really bad. Um, ooh, I don't like that window being up. Hold on. It's glaring in my face, and I don't like it. There we go. Better? Oh, so much better, right? A lot of shine on my face. Um, so I'm a bad streamer. I worked on the project without y'all. I'm sorry, I did. Um, because it was such a nice day yesterday, and I knew it was going to be such a nice day. Um, I wanted to bike to school. I did, I biked to school and I needed a bag. It worked. Okay, there's a few things I'm gonna change as I make the next bag. So you'll still get to see all the bits and pieces of assembling this bad boy. Um, but um, I finished it, I did. I admit, I know I shouldn't have, but uh, I did. So uh, a few things that I learned. Uh, one, I did actually do some research on turning corners. Um, <laughs> And I've done a few things wrong that I won't be able to remedy right at this point. And that is I shouldn't have put the zipper on until I sewed this one piece to the actual fabric. Okay, cool. 
can't fix that one. The pocket is reasonable. It's not the most perfect, but it will suffices. It holds my cell phone. I'm happy with it. Um, I also cut up a corrugated uh, political sign um, to provide the structure inside the bag. I, I know this sounds strange to you. It's my friend's political sign, so she, she feels nice that I'm, I'm reusing her sign. She's not planning on running for alderman again, um, but I'll carry her name with me everywhere. Uh, here's the part. <laughs> um, so recycling is going into this project. I had to make a little bit of a, of a little ribbon thing to kind of tap it into there because I want it to stay upright. Um, so I put a ribbon here and that seems to be working. Uh, for the holes to connect it to the seat and everything, I used my soldering iron to poke holes in it so that it wouldn't fray. Um, I really, really, really didn't want it to fray, so I melted it instead of cut it, and it, and it worked well. Um, there was no weather other than sunshine when I biked, so I can't really speak to how weatherproof this ended up being. Um, I also have only taped the, uh, half the seams because I ran out of weatherproofing tape. Um, I've already ordered more. It has come in, but I didn't have it in time for my ride. So the front half is um, weatherproofed, but not the back half. So I had to take it off and redo it. Uh, well, or take it off and, and finish the, the weatherproofing of this. Um, any other downsides? I forgot to put a little securing ribbon in the back corner so that I can secure it to my frame so it doesn't flop around. But once it was way down, it really didn't flop around. So I'm not as worried about that, but I will do it on the next one. Um, I also made the mistake. I checked it with y'all so many times. I don't know how, but this side is not, um, this side, this is not sewn on the reflective side up. Fortunately, it's the side that's pretty much going under my seat and it's attaching to the bike so you don't really see it. It gets covered. Whatever. Um, I did it. Now, there's something else I'm going to show y'all that I learned about here. And um, that was, I. so I successfully, you remember me having a little challenge getting, um, no worries. I'm, I'm happy your small person is coming back together. Exciting. Uh, this, this nut, I had some challenges getting it off, if you remember, and I figured out why. So I, I looked at it, but I didn't really think about it until I tried to put them back on. But this nut here um, has a, a an inner something going on. Do you see that? How it's not, like, normal looking? Um... That lack of normal looking is, it's, it's a nylon inside that keeps vibrations from allowing it to unscrew when it's on your screw. Um, because it's a bicycle, there are quite a few vibrations going on and it's helpful, but you, you cannot finger tighten it. See, I got to here and it acted like, like a, a, a cap nut, right? So um, to get it on there, you know, you have to really, you have to use a tool. Um, and I, I can't do it with my fingers either because I have to put a screw here to hold it in place and then tighten this. Um, but yeah, so this little, you want to, they're the nylon, it's a nylon thing. Cause I'm like looking at it and it's not going on. And so I, I go to my partner and I'm like, tell me about this nut <laughs> because this is weird looking and I can't get it on. And he's like, yeah, you have to use a tool because that nylon stuff keeps it from vibrating, but it also makes it so much harder to put on. So that's what I'm using. Um, I hope maybe one day I'll find that other saddlebag that I lost right before my triathlon um, because the nuts are probably still attached to it. And I would just rather use these than have to go to like McMaster car or something and buy more of these nylon silly little nuts. Um, so always learning things, right? And that's totally cool. What else? Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to be able to come together and make this other piece, right, that we talked about, um, the, the other side of my saddlebags. It was adorable. I actually had someone look at me on my bike and be like, I'm surprised your bike isn't more colorful. 
And I think my, my partner pointed out they think they were referring to the fact that the bike itself isn't that colorful, and that's because I had to buy it off of someone else, it's used, I did not choose the color, but it's the only kind of bike that I could ride, being a recumbent. So I wasn't thinking about the color, I was thinking about the fit. The bags I'm putting on it, lovely, absolutely lovely. Uh, bright and colorful as you saw and the flag is bright now with the change in flag direction if you recall the flag um, Is now kind of like this instead of like this um, And it flaps a lot more and it gets caught in the wind a lot more um, So there's a disadvantage to that but with that thicker piece being up at the top of the flag um, I think cars are gonna see me more so that's an advantage that I don't feel like giving up um Here's the rest of the political sign that I am using. <laughs> uh, I will use it some more uh, for this project to, to cut the other triangle once I've sewn it. Um, recycle, people. It's good for you. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I had the best feeling yesterday. I'll tell you about it as I get set up to sew. It was the best feeling. Okay, so... I use this technique to get kids to gather around me um, that I learned from Chadwick, who works for me, and it works really well, and it's you yell a certain phrase, and the kids come to you, and it needs to be a weird phrase, something that makes them laugh, and um, so we, I, I've, I've been using, and, and Chadwick used um, in summer camps, the term fuzzy dinosaur. Let me tell you about the power of fuzzy dinosaur. It's wonderful. You train your first graders to come at the words fuzzy dinosaur and they come running and they run across the parking lot. They run across the entirety of the school playground and the grounds and the woods and they come and they come and they run and they just wrap their arms around you and your waist and hug you and it's all of them hugging you at once. So it's like 18 kids about this tall just hugging you all at once. Um, and it's the best feeling. Um, it's just the best feeling to be hugged by 18 first graders all at once. Um, we were out in the yards collecting trash after the winter, you know, plows collected all kind of in the piles um, after all that snowfall. And we're creating art with the trash. We're going to call, take, you know, take notice of the, the oceans filling up with trash. And we're going to talk about that in our piece. Um, and uh, so we went around with our gloves and our big trash bag collecting trash off of the school grounds. It was a delightful experience to, just to collect the trash and to work with the kids, but also 18 kids giving you a hug at once. It's amazing. Um, you know, if you need a pick-me-up in your day, i got to recommend the 18 kid, kid hug. There's just literally nothing like it. Um, it's true. So I'm double checking. Okay, this one, it appears I did correctly. Thank goodness. Um, both reflective sides are out. Uh, and I need to double check. So something I did really, really right on this bag that I want to do right again is this little lip right here. This was, this was, this makes it look manufactured. It's really provides a lot of stability in the, the sewing. Um, it's really quite nice. Do, do, do. Um, it's this, this right here. So I, I did, I started the zipper down at the bottom. Um, now it does get off. That's my only negative. I think I'm going to um, tuck it down a little bit further. Um, but overall, I like that I turned it the way I did right here. So the, the corner is just below the, um, the zipper like this. Uh, this one has a small disadvantage, I admit. Um, it, it comes apart, and so I really want to be able to get, and it's hard, that um, nubbin from the zipper in there. Hopefully, I will just learn to never unzip it all the way. Um, it is the one on the left, so it is probably the one I won't be more likely to use, unfortunately. Um, let's tuck it down in there. Let's get this up here. Slide it down. I did get it to run parallel again um, before I went on my bike ride, but of course now I've I've done a lot of things and torn it apart to show you guys what I did. Um, it's almost lined up. See that? Almost lined up. Um, zippers 
They're not magic, okay? Like, you can look up videos on how they work online, but it sometimes feels like it. Certainly when you're sewing with them. Mm, that is some magic. Ugh. And this being an expensive zipper, <laughs> you know, you know how it goes. I just really want this to slide in there and work the way I want it to work. And that means it has to get pushed. I may have to ask someone with stronger fingers than me. Or smaller fingers. I'm not sure what the imperative is here. Smaller or stronger. But I'm trying. But if I can... I see, it's still almost lined up, not quite lined up. It's because I need it in, in the holder. It needs to go in the holder. See that? Oh, see, I've got fabric blocking it. That's the problem. Okay. Coming at it from this direction. Oh, I see what the problem is. Always check the other side. There we are. Slipping it in there. Maybe now it'll line up nicely. I hope this is entertaining. Ah! Okay. That was not the noise I wanted to hear, but it's okay. It wasn't the noise I wanted to make either, but I made it. Okay. So we're going to... Run this. Will this work? If I. Because what I want is this to go in here. I didn't need a zipper that came completely apart. I really, really didn't. But that's what I got. So if I slide this here. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to have to push it in from the top. Completely in from the top. Now. All right, I did it. Okay, now how to make sure it never happens again. Ugh. Um, you know, my mom told me a trick once that just sew across when you don't want that to happen. So I will probably do that. Um, not bad, but look at that nice little waterproof zipper stealing right up for me. It's pretty nice, pretty nice. So this is the left side and this is the right side. So we're gonna line this up uh, to do a similar thing, I am going to, however, tear up the seam and move it up so that I'm not pulling it apart there. Uh, I have weatherproofed it already. Look, see, things I'm learning, but this is one I can fix right now. So here I'm pulling off the waterproof tape. It's probably going to be gross and messy. Yeah, like that. Um, it's fine. We'll make it work. It also says that some of it is sealed well and some of it is not sealed well. So we should work on that. Um, seam ripper or scissors, all good choices. There we go. Uh, now all we have to do is tear up the, se the seam, the seam itself. So we do still need the seam ripper. Um, where did I put it? I have several. Here's one. Ooh. Old lady knees. Okay. So I'm going to move that seam up because I learned a little something something. And I'm going to tear it up like this. Do -do. Um, other exciting things. No. Um, well, I'm excited to be working on this mural. I'm working with some like kind of big name for around here artists, which is really cool. Um, but I want to use my my position of power for for being asked to do this to help elevate their voices and learn from them because I'm not a muralist. I have a lot to learn there. Um, so Yasmin, who uh, is leading this, is great and talented and amazing um and i have a lot to learn so i'm just i don't know so i have a paint sprayer because of all the work i do on my house and i was like yo what if i just lay down the base color so that it's a lot better for y'all um and she was about it but i'm telling you it's going to be a challenge to get that generator or my car to where i need to be um I'm thinking my car is going to be the more reliable choice. <laughs> um, so I can hook up my Prius to act as a generator. Um, 
which would be pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be wildly cool, actually. Uh, but, like, I got to get the car closer. I got to get the car closer. So, like, the path is the easiest way of accessing the bridge. The bridge is a road bridge, so it's elevated above the path. And it's the area it's in is, like, it needs more attention and needs more love from the city. So it's not really safe to go straight from the bridge to the walking path. There's no access in that way. There sh maybe should be, um, but there isn't. You have to go all the way to a main road, and it's, um, it's almost a quarter of a mile, actually, uh, to get from the main road to this location on the footpath. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly and how exactly I'm going to do this. Um, the... I really think my car is the way to do it, but the the I have to get my car there closer somehow. And um, well, uh, the two property oops the two properties that are the closest I am reaching out to and asking for access to their property so that I can get there and clean up the area, which I think they'd be all about because who doesn't want a mural nearer their their property so that it's nicer and cleaner. Um, the first property uh, is owned by a big rental company here in Manchester. Um, oh yeah, and for those of you that are new, I'm in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, but, uh, so this big Elm Grove company, if anyone has any connection to Elm Grove company, let me know. Um, they uh, manage this property or own this, I, I think they own the property. I use the GIS viewer um, to sneak their access and who managed it and who ran it um and i'm working it but i don't have a response from them yet so i tried the property on the other side of the rail trail and it's a seal coating company that's listed there i don't know that it's actually a seal coating company um i called it and they're like we don't have an address there and i'm like okay well like it's listed on google as your company so can you tell me more? Because, <laughs> um, you know, I could really use access here. And he was like, well, um, you know, maybe our owner lived there many years ago. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, does he know the property owner? Like, can he get me in contact with them? Um, and he was like, uh, he probably doesn't remember. So I was like, okay, cool. I get that. What other options? I was like, look, there's this other property. Uh, it's across the way, but it's Elm Street, Elm Grove Company. So I don't know if I'm like going to have any success getting into them because they're kind of big. And the dude was like, oh, I do work for them. I manage that account. I can get you connected to them. Here's the number I use to call them. So I did call that number and left a message and keep your fingers crossed for me so that I can borrow that driveway. Um, that, that parking lot for that apartment complex. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be there on that, on this Friday. I'm going to be working on that, that, that spot. Um, should be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you know, just supporting other artists. I'm excited about it. I really am. Um, having not done a project like this before. Okay. We are going to trim up this weatherproofing material. We're going to put some new weatherproofing material down because I just sewed that a little differently. Um, it's still the same idea. We're just going to make it a little taller, right? And um, yeah, it's going to work. It's going to work. Okay, let's turn on the iron. I hadn't done that yet. Uh, so many cords. <laughs> I have camera cords. I've got. <laughs> I've got sewing machine cord. Oh, it'd be really cool to document um, this process and to live stream my making of this. I might, I might try it. Um, I make no promises. Um, it'll be hard because if I do live stream it, I'm going to be like doing it on my phone. So I'm not going to be able to type or moderate. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> So I'm hoping Friday morning to start it. Maybe I'll just like stream on location. 
I don't know, like just to be like, hey, yo, I'm here, I'm doing it. And I made the connection to Elm Grove Company or the Seal Coating Company or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> These are the complications in the life of an artist. No, that's so cool. You know, when I was growing up, all I wanted to be, well, I wanted to be a ballerina at first, but I grew too tall very quickly. Um, so we knew that wasn't going to be a thing. Um, I mean, it took a long time for me to accept it, but everyone else around me knew. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, I'm trying to think of how to, like, it's, it's cool. It's cool to me um, that, like, I am an artist and I'm working with other artists. And, like, I've never done a mural before, okay? 100%. Never done a mural before. But apparently it's a, it's a thing a lot of artists do. It's a great way to get paid for work, right? Um, but, like, dude, I'm an artist. I am what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, anyways, small moments for me. Uh, realizing that I'm, like, doing the very thing I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, I don't know how that makes you feel, but I, I feel pretty cool about it. I really do. Um, checking, because I am doing a lot. Um, yeah, so if you know either... Um, yeah, Elm Grove Companies would be really great. That's who I really need to get in contact with right now. If you know Elm Grove Companies, please, please send them my way. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, yeah, send them my way. What other things? I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited about this whole mural thing. Like, I'm working with real artists, and, like, I'm a real artist, and, like, dude, there's Josemar Mateo. Um, I hope I'm saying his last name right. Josemar is, in, is an incredible artist. He's, like, blowing up the local art scene, and he's, like, he had, he had a conversation. He sat right here in my studio with me and, like, talked to me about his work and, like, his goals and the things he's doing. And I don't know, I was just, I had this, like, it's this, like, coolness that artists of that caliber, like, want to talk to me, and they hang out with me. And, and then, so, like, Peter Noonan, another amazing artist who I look up to a great deal, um, who, who got me started on the New Hampshire Creative Club, is also taking part in this. And, like, you know, he sees me walking and, like, recognizes me from a quarter mile away, and... You know, we're doing the awkward long distance walk, I see you coming kind of thing. Um, uh, and I'm like, I thought that was you. You know, we can recognize each other at a quarter of it a mile. Like, this dude's done stuff for the New Yorker. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I just, I, I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is I am, in fact, living my dream. I hope you're living your dream. If you're not living your dream and I can help you live your dream, let me know how. I mean, I don't have like a ton of money to spend on anything or anything like that. But like, if you need connections in the New, New Hampshire or Manchester artist um, community, I am happy to make that happen for you. Um, if you like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Like I have other artist communities that I, I have some connections in, like in Alabama or maybe even Northern Virginia. Um, but just like, if you are nervous at all about contacting an artist and asking them questions, don't be at all, because we all experience this little bits of awe from time to time when we learn about each other or um, like get to work with each other because we're all different and those different experiences are what make us, you know, powerful. And um yeah, I, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, all right, these are broken pins, and I'm trying to be so much better about removing bent pins from my pin cushion because I dislike that. Um, I'm going to mark this, actually, which is something I didn't do before. This is what I learned from a little bit of research. But to turn a corner really successfully, you have to be really um, uptight about sewing your margins. Um, 
about about uh, leaving your margin. So I'm going to mark right here because that's where I want to stop sewing so that I pick up the next piece. Um, so if I like do something like this, somewhere in here is where we stop, dang it. Don't sew past these points. You think it'll work? I really don't know. Um, I don't know, I just, to be included in this project, it feels like a certain degree of, I guess it's validation um, that I don't always experience and don't always feel, no matter how, what you think, like you, you're just seeing, right? <laughs> it's, it's like the internet world, right? You just see what I'm projecting here on Twitch, right? If you, if you don't personally know me, you, you don't know that I'm like terrified all the time and anxious all the time, but I am. And I'm so impressed with the artists around me who are doing stuff. Um, and I don't mind admitting that because we, we, we need to admit those things to ourselves in order to make the world better. I'm gonna do this and it makes sense. And actually, I'm going to start from up here, so hopefully I don't go over that mark that I made. And we're just going to, we're going to put down the needle by hand, make sure I know where I'm putting it. Pull. And now we're going to go back and not go past our, 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 our seam allowances. And I feel like that stitch is a little wide, so I just narrowed it a smidge. I'm gonna keep going. There's also, so when I'm assembling this, I'm noticing some minor challenges. Um, you know, the, the gray reflective fabric is much thicker and much stiffer. So it kind of overwhelms structurally the light green and uh, bright yellow fabrics. So maybe I should have basted like the lime green and um, light yellow fabrics to um, a gray piece of fabric so that it was of a similar strength. Um, that's probably the right way to do it. It's not how I did it. Um, just saying. We, we learn as we go along, right? Um, that's, that's part of the difference too. I'm not working from a pattern. I'm making this up as I go um, because uh, this is a bike that's not in production anymore. Um, the company doesn't exist anymore. You can't get, you can't get these, these parts. You, it just doesn't happen. Um, you can't do it. So like nobody makes bags for this bike. So I have to make them. Um, I have to make them. It's just what it is. Uh, okay. How is your small person? Does your small person like my stream? <laughs> Will it put them to sleep? I'm sure that's what you want right now. <laughs> oh, you have so much work cut out for you. Lady Verona appears to have a small person with her right now. Small people are a lot of work. You can't always just yell fuzzy dinosaur at them and get hugs. Sometimes it just doesn't work because they decided not to. They have brains. Children have brains. And um, they decide to do things. And it's not always what you want. That can be a joy and a terrifying prospect. OK, so how they did this in my research was they just now it was a it was a it was a, a 45 degree angle and or a 90 degree angle and i am doing something narrower than a 45 so there is some challenge here i think i'm gonna draw this line out so maybe that will help me because i'm having trouble lining it up so Knowing that I want my fabric to line up here might help. There we go. We'll try that. Um, 
we're going to turn it. It's going to become turnt. And um, I don't know how to do this. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the level I want. But am I lined up adequately? That's the question. And that I, I don't know. I think it needs to be folded down. Yeah, let's fold it down to the, the end of the seam right there. Let's pinch it with a magnet because I really don't want to put a hole there at the top of my bag. Pinching with magnets. Neomidium, rare earth magnets, whatever. It's a great way to sew if you don't want um, holes in your stuff. Ah, gravy, of course, on a metal table. Mm, okay, rethinking, rethinking. Okay, we're gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna iron it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a crease in. That's what I'm gonna do, right? That's gonna work. Dump everything off my ironing board. I, I am making this up as I go. Please don't judge me poorly because of that, okay? It just, it is what it is, all right? This is, I should make this my theme song. What do you think? Is this a theme song enough for me? It, it's kind of swingy, it's kind of fun, it's got a little techno to it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling this could be theme song potential. Um, I just keep changing the song each time to go with my mood, um, but maybe, maybe that's not right. And I should probably pick a theme song. It's got a lot of energy to it. That's nice. Okay, so we've got that creased now. It's going to turn, and we're going to sew this right here. And we're just going to sew into that corner. Yeah, like that. Okay. Okay. Theory is working. I am pinning in parallel instead of perpendicular because we want to, um, I've mentioned this before, because uh, I want to make the fewest holes possible. I just poked myself really good. Did you see that? No? Good. Um, yeah, just as few holes possible, particularly on the outside, so if I'm pinning it on the inside real close to the edge here and in parallel, then I'm within the seam allowance. Okay. Do you think I can do this? I think I'm going to sew what I, I'd like to sew um, from the apex down. I don't know if I can do that though. I think I have to sew this way. It's almost like I need a presser foot that doesn't have any frontage. I wonder if I have that. <laughs> I have a bunch of presser foots, but I've never used them for anything. Literally anything. Um, I might have a button presser foot. I mean, like a button hole maker. I, I cannot say I've ever used it. Um, now, in in this corner on the other one, it did get tight and I couldn't sew it. I ended up hand sewing it the night before and, you know, staying up later than I should have to get it done. But that's just life, I guess. All right, let's try. We're going in. We're going into the corner. You think I can do it? It might work. Oh my gosh. This is what happens when you research stuff instead of just jumping in and doing it. Ah! Okay, I might have gone a little too far. We'll find out. Okay. Could you see it? I mean, you probably couldn't. That's the problem. I, I mean, I can put all these views together, but it doesn't really mean you can actually see anything. Okay, I did go like one stitch too far. Um, not bad. 
Let's see what it looks like when I flip it over. Oh my gosh, that is the best turned corner ever. Okay, it's not perfect, but you have to admit that looks pretty good. Way better than my other one. <laughs> we'll see when I get to, um, I should, I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo that one stitch. I don't think it's gonna affect anything because I really did go back and forth several times. So I'm gonna undo the one extra stitch. Okay. Now let's turn it and take a look. Oh my gosh, almost no puckering. There's some though. Oh, it undid it. Okay, um, we're gonna go back in. And how are we gonna do this? Uh, I don't know, I'm thinking, I'm doing some geometry in my head. Some sewing geometry. It might just be something I need to hand sew, okay? Just that little itty bitty tip. Um, because I can't figure out how to do it. It's gonna have a hand sew. Just it's like three stitches at the top, and it would be perfect. But I think I think I can live with that. Um, let's go to the other side. Yeah. Move the sewing machine around, and let's pin the next one. So using the same technique that I just learned. Um, we're gonna turn it, we're gonna, well first we're gonna rip off this extra string. This is what's, uh, rip stop nylon prevents. Yeah, I did just throw that on the floor. Don't judge me. Um, so we, we turn it. Okay, how do they do this? This, this is a better angle honoring the margins. I'm gonna turn it like this and do something like this. Is that what I'm doing? Sure. Let's pretend. Line it up right here. This is hard. <laughs> Can you see my fingers? They're, they're like trying really hard. But they just don't want to manipulate the fabric in the way that the fabric wants to be manipulated. It's like a miscommunication of wants and desires here. I'm working it though. Maybe magnets will help. Magnets are always the answer. So, how does this work? So I want this pinned here. Um, so I'm gonna pin in this direction. And I'm gonna pin like this. Okay, maybe my, my little tucked pin corners aren't gonna be perfect, okay? Don't, don't judge me that they're not perfect. Okay, but we do need to get all three pieces of fabric together because that is a pocket and I failed to do that on my first pin. So I'm gonna have to go back and give that some attention because that's not pinned in all the way. It is a slippery fabric, which makes it particularly inclined to not pin. Um, I'm telling you no, though, this, this reflective fabric is super grippy, which is a problem when I was trying to make ribbons out of it. Um, tubes, really. Should have chosen the stop rip for it. The rip stop nylon. Oh, that's a, that's a bent one. We're trying to get rid of you. pin. Remember, tiny pinnings just in here parallel, even though that's probably contradictory to everything you've learned, because we want to make the fewest holes possible in this fabric that are on the outside of the sewing seam, because we don't want this to like, that one's done, go away. Um, 
because we don't want this to leak. It's not going to be watertight, but I, I would really like to be able to like throw a cell phone. Well, cell phones are waterproof these days, but you know what I mean. I would just really, really deeply appreciate that. Oh, um, this is my back corner. I should put a ribbon here. Actually, one on the longer side. I mean, I think any of them long. Hey. I should put a ribbon here because I forgot to do that previously. So we're going to put it right, right here. And that ribbon is going to um, do provide a location to tie it down in the back. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's trim this string because it's bothering me. Doesn't bother you? Don't trim it. It bothers me. I trim it. All right, so I'm going to sew down towards the corner. I feel like that is backwards, but I really am not sure how to get it in there really super tight, you know what I mean? Um, without doing it that way. So I line it up. We're going to go over that little nubbin. That'll be wonderful. Nubbin of a ribbon. So, do I have a seam allowance? It appears I do. It's not moving forward because the pin is keeping it a little bit. There we go. Now we sew backwards, so we make that little knot and sew forward again. Okay. Why do I have so much extra green over here? Because I probably didn't account for enough of a seam allowance on those pockets that I made um, for the length of the, the front piece. And um, so I lost a little bit. And you know what the great thing about a triangle is? You just move it down. Have I talked about pin heads with y'all? Not recently, I don't think. So I love, I got those purple ergonomic uh, pin heads. They're a little thicker pin than I generally would like, but I was like, my fingers are sore. I think I should get these. And um, while they do alleviate that, and they say that they're heat proof, they are not heat proof. Uh, just saying. So they do melt when you put the iron over them. And, um, yeah, you, you should be aware that they, they do actually melt. Um, in the corner, in the corner, go, go. It's not going any further. It should be a knot. Another little point for hand sewing, I suppose. Let's take a peek at it. I mean, it looks pretty pro. Like, look at that. That's, that's not bad at all. Um... Actually, I'm not digging it. <laughs> oh, just a little research and what it teaches you. But the bag is coming together. I do teach today, so I only have maybe an hour more of this. If you have your questions, ask them now. I did get to go to a wedding today, or not today, this weekend. It was delightful. Um, I'm surprised, not surprised, frustrated by the number of people there that weren't wearing masks. We were in a high transmission county, um, and people weren't wearing masks. I don't understand. And these are people I generally think of as being pretty smart. What's their deal? I don't know. Someone tell me. Um, so that happened. Um, it was a fun time dancing the night away. I, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. It was colder than I'd anticipated. Um, <laughs> it was an outdoor wedding, uh, and I chose a one-shouldered floor-length, uh, formal gown, uh, and, uh, it was lovely, it was lovely. 
but <laughs> it was a little cold. I managed. I did manage. It, it, it was fine. It really was fine. But I did bring a second dress I could have worn, but I didn't want to change before the reception. Um, and change into the, the, the one shoulder dress to be cool enough to dance the night away because I wore the long sleeve dress at my last wedding and boy was that warm. Um, anyways, it was at this uh, cute place up north um, called White Whitefield in Whitefield, New Hampshire. It was like a big yellow. Um, it was a it was a big yellow old school hotel with these like winding hallways that reminded me of The Shining. Um, and the hallways were filled with art, which was really, really, really nice. Um, what else? Uh, and we got to watch some people do some axe throwing. Uh, but it was so hard to be up there um, at this at this place, uh, food-wise. Um, I have some food allergies, and we tried to do the vegetarian thing. Um, I think we do the vegetarian thing, but um, up there the only vegetarian was like pasta. Um, and I don't know why people like to think that vegetarian food is pasta. Um, I rarely eat pasta. It's not good for you, man. It's just not good for you. Um, okay, so that had a bit of a puckered corner. That's okay. It's not the worst. So I can undo some of that corner. Can I undo some of that corner? Let's undo some of that. No, no, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Um, it's it's just going to end up more puckered if I try to fix it, right? And it's a pretty small pucker. It's just me being a perfectionist. Now, this has been the harder part for me to sew, and I don't know why. Maybe I should have done it differently, but, you know, trying to l double up these um, sewing points right one on top of the other is hard and I want that overlap so that the zipper has that little garage to go into so it helps keep it like watertight um, anyways information you didn't need no you do because if you're watching this you might make your own bag one day I hope you make your own bag one day because I am loving the freedom it's giving me um, there are some disadvantages to this for sure um, but I'm getting a lot of freedom and the ability to get what I need done. So should I sew this direction? I think so. So my pins should point towards where the needle's coming from. It makes it easier to pull them out. So these purple ones I thought would be really wonderful for grabbing and stuff to pull out. And they're a little bit thicker. The metal's a little bit thicker than I would have liked. Um, but really they're just not heat proof. The glass ones technically are heat proof, but sometimes the ends of them shatter. Um, so there's a disadvantage on those as well. And then you have these like these pure metal ones, which are really great for really fine sewing, but they're so hard to pull out, especially when your nail starts looking like this, like it does on me right now. Anyways, more information than you require. This could also be my theme music, I feel like. Should I have theme music or should I just keep, you know, changing it up as I as I feel? I don't know. I, I worry that like some kind of theme music would be really, really great and help with my brand and make more people sign on or something. I don't know. What do I know? Nothing. Pretty much. I use this on my Instagram channel, and so every time I hear it, I just hear, want to hear myself say spirograph, um, <laughs> which is really strange, because I, I did, I recorded, um, who remembers spirograph uh, to the song, and um, it was adorable. I thought it was adorable. You might have different opinions, and that's okay. You're allowed to have different opinions. You know, maybe... What I should have done, and oh, I'm, I turned the pins around. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, maybe what I should have done here is not sewn this top part on, but waited for the other fabric to come and then sewn them at the same time. Probably would have made this corner harder, but might have been the right thing to do. 
So now I have to turn that corner twice. Ugh. That's probably what I should have done. Because I'm sure, like, your bag <laughs> that you're making is going to have a really sharp apex point like mine does. Um, no, not likely. This is just because of the recumbentness of my bike. I mean, it makes for a great shape. But I don't see it as a common shape for bags. And this is why. Alright. We're gonna... Line this up. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get this right. Um... Help me. Um... This is going to work, surely. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> mm. Good one. I, ha I did, you know, I got that neon thread and I haven't used it yet. I'm going to put holes in the gray because it's, it's nice and waterproof. We talked about this. Okay. Just keep going like this, laying it out, and I'm, I'm trying to find the, the seam here. Okay. So, like, put pins along. <laughs> oh, I gotta seam this up. We're going to seam it up quite high. Right there. I think I did this when I made the other one too. I was like, oh wait, don't do that. Because you got to seam you up. Because things, we don't want that turned over wrong. There we go. There we go, we're gonna sew that up real quick. Real fast and then we'll finish the pinning. The pinning. Mm -mm. Drink more water, I need to drink more water. Remind me to drink more water. I never drink enough water. Everyone doesn't drink enough water. I do. Interesting. I just did this in the weirdest way. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> so the other one, I went across, and on this one, I went up and down. Uh huh. Wonder why I did that. What did I learn last time that's making me inclined to sew this way? I learned anything. Um, means I don't need a pin there, but whatever. Move the sewing machine aside, make the last few pins. Hope we can pin this over like this. Surely this will work. Well, we can't pin it yet. We gotta we gotta go this way first. Gotta sew this up. this up, putting the presser foot down, and I'm going to sew. First I'm going to take some water. Water! I swam this morning, that was delightful. I biked to work yesterday. The day before that I went for an hour and a half walk because it's so nice. We haven't had weather this nice at all. I still see no mushrooms. Makes me sad to not see mushrooms. I may have taken that not too far back, not respecting my seam allowances. 
I should practice sewing boxes. Oh, that that needle is on the it's, it's on the outside of what I'm sewing. How could I? It'll be fine. It'll probably be within the tape, but still, not what I'm trying to do. Here. See what I'm doing? Very logical question. Never sure. Really should just have like a really close camera pointed right here. I mean, sometimes I do. It'll sew that far. If I flip it, will that help? Oh, don't step on it on accident. That's what I just did. Not bad. Okay, I, I will take a little hand sewing there to, to, to really shore it up, but it's not bad at all. Now we do the same thing we did when we were up there on the other side. Now how do you do when it gets into a bag shape? That's the harder part. So I, I totally wanted to do this live with you on the other bag, but I knew that there was a lot I had to learn here. So I'm kind of glad I didn't. Because I have to be honest, like, I had a lot of finagling and figuring to do. Why can't I just go up and over like this? Why won't it just turn? I don't understand. I feel like it could be done with paper in the right circumstance. So why can't I do it with fabric? Right? That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Right there. Um, but. There we are. That's where I want it. Um, trying to line it up as perfectly as I can. Okay. Now, if I pin this, uh, let's pin this one here without stabbing myself up like this. No, it didn't pop out. Okay, right there. And I pin this over, right? Sure. I don't want to pin it though. We're just going to hold it. I don't want to add a hole there. Um, we're going to attempt. No, we're learning to sew down towards the apexes. Maybe that's more appropriate for some reason. Okay. I need to put the, the needle down with the foot. Uh, I did this uh, while I was sewing the last time too. Um, so these are reverse grip tweezers. Um, the way they work is you press and they open and they close and they hold. If you have problems like sewing or pinching or things like that, it's really great. They also kind of work as like a, a tweezer with a little more grip to sometimes pull things out. Um, just like I'm doing. There we go. See, I pulled the needle. I pulled the pin. Um, they're really helpful. They can be at least. All right, we're going to sew forward. 
and back to make that knot. And uh, do I pull the pin yet? I don't know. I'm so forward. I don't pull the pin now. I'm trying my darndest to keep this going by pressing this in and out. And not having the extra fabric sewn in, right? Theoretically. So I still I think I have the extra fabric out. Maybe not. A little tighter. A little tighter. And now we're gonna go back. And a little tighter. And we'll hand sew that right that point at the eight. Kind of. I mean, it's a turn. It's not sealed. It, it matches the other one. So whatever I'm doing wrong, it matches. Okay. Um, I thought I cleaned it up more. I didn't. That's okay. It's okay. Remember, I'm learning. This is the first time I've done this. And nobody is teaching me. You should feel similarly when you're doing stuff. I'm not teaching you. I'm just doing what I'm doing, man. Okay, but that is a fully assembled, other than the back, bag. Look at that. This is where we were the last time. So I'm already doing all of this faster. Oh no, <laughs> I slowed it in. Ah. It's okay, it's a loop, it will work. I'm unhappy. Whatever. Okay. Um, let's pin on the back. Mm -hmm. Let's do that, okay? This first line of pinning. Well, first let's find that other piece of fabric in the middle. I'm looking for a gray triangle. Um, it's around. It probably threw it someplace. Uh, question mark, question mark. I have too many projects going on at the same time. And I'm looking for the gray fabric. It's around. I know it is. Because I cut it. Oh, you know what? It's probably over here. Yep. It is. So here's the back. Um, so here's the back. So we're going to treat these fabrics as one sewing it on. That's what I did the last time and I thought it went reasonably well. You know. So I'm treating these fabrics as one. We pin it right here. Cool. Might need to pin on the other side. I don't know, but for now that's what we want. Um, We gotta turn it because we're sewing this inside out. It's like sewing a pillow, but that already has the zipper on it, you know. So, oh, I poked myself. I hurt. At least I didn't treat this time. Okay. Now, with this information, knowledge, we take the apex thingy and we sew. Again, we're going to treat this fabric as one, so I'm laying it flat. I'm going to pin it there. And yeah, the zippered piece is wider because I gave it a lot of seam allowance in case. I, I was just really worried that it wouldn't work out nicely. Um, so 
so I'm gonna move this camera back a smidge and line this puppy up. Should I sew the bottom first? It might make my life happier. Easier. Not happier. Easier. I think I sewed the bottom first on the other one, and I think it was, in fact, easier. Because it's just straightforward. There's no, like, figuring out double fabrics and triple fabrics, and there's a zipper here. We gotta turn it here. Yeah, we're just gonna go straight across. Pinned nicely together. Just like that. Pretty happy with how this is going. really working this in get where we want to go again we're going to be really uptight with our, our seam allowances as apparently that's the secret sauce to making these things work ouch I do keep poking myself today maybe it's because I almost would rather be outside I thought about streaming outside um, there would have been a lot of noise and stuff but it might have been really nice I don't know. Um, I would have to figure out power out there. Power, power would be the biggest challenge. It's true. All right, seam allowance. We're gonna call it right here. Cool. We're gonna sew down. I'm gonna pin it really close in the back in a way that I hope I can pull the pin after I put the quilt down. Cool. I'm learning things. Look at me. Put the pin down. Bring it in so you can see it a little bit. And so, make it up. And so, there we are. I almost sewed over my mark. Don't do that. Remember, the secret to the corners is apparently really following your seam allowances, which becomes a lot harder when you're like drafting your own patterns. I've always, even when I was a kid, learning to sew pattern patterns, seeing seam allowances as suggestions, so um, that's probably part of my problem. And I keep using my hand here to guide it, and that's kind of blocking the view. I'm sorry. Why is it sliding? No, but it is. All right, let's cut this up. I'm gonna cut it up. I know it's gonna block the camera. I'm sorry. I think it has something to do with the uh, sliding though. And the sliding stopped, so I think that was accurate. Again, seam allowances. bottom. The bottom part is sewn on. Let's go up the zippers. This 
sounds like like some kind of Good Morning America type intro that could be fun. Um, it really, it sounds more like an intro, right? But I don't know that it's me. Yeah, you know, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Is it me? All right, we're gonna pin this bad boy, and we're gonna do it perpendicular. And tiny. As tiny as we can. All right, now I can pull that pin. Um, again, here, following the seam allowances. That's, that's what they keep freaking saying. I don't know if it's true. I'm going to try. That's what I was told on the interwebs. See, I, I think I'm going to get puckering right there. See, I can see the puckering already happening. in the middle ish right there and I hope that brings us as far as we need to be Cool, cool. I'm digging it so far. Let's put another pin in right here. And it feels excessive, but I'm not opposed to excessive pinning. There we go. Okay. All right. I like it. I'm feeling good about this one. There might be some puckering. We'll get through it. There's going to be puckering. I can tell there's going to be puckering. But I think it's going to be straighter than the, the other one I did. So. I think sewing straighter does make it a little faster. I said that backwards. Cool. Sewing straighter makes it faster. No, sewing, well, that's probably true too, but um, sewing faster makes it straighter. It out like that. Ooh, that's what I should have done on the other one. This, oh, this is gonna, oh, this is nice. Popping it out. Did you see what I just did? I, I, oh, it's hard to describe. Okay. Um, again, we need to respect our seam allowances. I'm gonna bring it in a bit. This this straightened out weirdly. So we're gonna drop that right 
right here. Better. Better. Only a little bit of stitching. Ah, oh, the stitching is too visible. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, I didn't really follow my seam allowance as well here. Do I sew back over it or just leave it? I, that's gonna that's that's gonna be the side that's under my seat, so we're just gonna leave it. Okay, now we seal the pillow up. Um, this is the final bit where we just make the whole thing happen. Um, <laughs> in theory. And I got time. I'm going to jump up and down. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be like, look, we did it. We did it. You know, whatever. Um, then it's going to happen on the stream. I'm going to be like, look, it's a bag. It's totally a bag. You believe me? Okay. Let us line this up. Right there. That's it. That's it right there. I can tell. What direction am I sewing this? That I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd like to sew down from the apex so the puckering occurs at the bottom. So I'm going to try to set this up that way. down. Cool, cool. Nice. I say it every time, but that parallel pinning is that we're not putting extra holes out in the fabric. Normally it wouldn't matter, right? Fabric has holes, it's breathable, but we are trying to keep this more on the watertight side. It's not waterproof, it's not going to be perfect, but it sure would be nice if it was pretty solid because I, it's not like I even choose to like ride in the rain all that frequently. It's something I actually avoid. Um, but sometimes it happens. Okay, so we're gonna, there's a big pucker that's happening here. Why? I don't know. All right, because I turned all the others so perfectly that all the puckering had to happen in one spot. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. All right, let's sew it. There's going to be so much puckering. That sucks. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna sew this one perpendicular, or pin it perpendicularly, because I, I want to be able to pull that pin if it's in the way. Is that going to work? It kind of looks like I've got some more puckering going on. There we go. We're going to take it from there. Ow! Hey! 
right? That's gonna work. gonna have that pucker down at the bottom there. there's no getting over that one i'm ooh, maybe before remind me as i'm sewing <laughs> um that i should add a thing maybe i should just do it now lady <laughs> rona you're back you have your hands free do you now do you oh i uh, babies babies are work man you notice i don't have one no um babies are lots of work Man, oh man. But, uh, yeah, I bet you're exhausted. So, um, I'm adding a little ribbon here into the corner uh, because the other one kind of failed a little bit. So I'm just going to try to, like, do do do, put one here, and um, maybe that will make up for the, the one that kind of failed. I'm just tucking it in there. There's going to be so much puckering right here. Because I sewed the other one so well that the puckering has to go somewhere, right? Oh. Bags are hard. Oh. Baby's got a lot going on. Now the ribbon is falling through. Just pin down. Just pin down. Darn it. Oof. My fingers. I poked them quite a bit this time. Okay. There's a ribbon there. Theoretically, I have a ribbon. fabric that's going to have to be accommodated in this corner. One of these days I'll get better at sewing. I'm bringing it into the corner, accommodating the, the bubble. I don't know that I caught my fabric at all there. We're gonna have to find out. Hey, I did. Okay. That's. I didn't even sew a knot because I was so sure I had blipped it. Um, let's sew a knot over that corner. Sure, that'll do it. Man. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have cut that yet. Maybe I should have checked to see that it went well. Um, let's uh, unzip this. And this is a hard way to unzip this. Uh, it was hard the last time, too. Basically, I just got to get my finger up in there and, yeah, turn it until I get a hole that I can pull everything through, and then I start weatherproofing. It's going to be a bag! It's going to be a bag! With a little bit of hand sewing and some weatherproofing stripping uh, stuffs it's gonna be a bag i'll have two saddle bags all right <laughs> and i didn't capture it at all <laughs> cool thanks for that all right you know what that's some puckering but it kind of looks intentional so i'll take it okay 
It's a bag, y'all. It really is. Um, I love it. Okay, there's, I mean, there's some little mistakes like this right here, you know, where this seam is visible here, and that's not what I would have wanted. Um, but I'll take it. Uh, this is way better. Look at that. Uh, learned a little bit on the other bag. Yes, clearly. Okay, we have something that I can loop through with wire or some jazz to, to narrow it down. It would have been nice to have it on this side as well, but that's fine. Um, I still have my, like, pro-looking turn. It's not perfect. It's not as nice looking as the other side, but it's, this is nice. This, this right here is nice. This is a lot less nice. Um, but it will work. It will suffice. Okay, I'm going to take the, um, cutout and put it in here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the apex holder. Um, that's fine. Uh, this is the right way, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put it in here, make sure the same size thing works, and I'm going to trace it onto the remaining plastic that I have, cutting it out. Now I have had to like put it in, I kind of have to do that. And that's unfortunate because um, I'd like that structural integrity, but I'm not going to fight it, okay? Like, just get it. The fact that I have a bag that's <laughs> supported plastically <laughs> is pretty cool. I thought about making the bottom piece and the back piece like a tube that I could really like nail home that stuff. Um, like slipping it in so that this part of the more part of the structure but I decided not to this isn't going right it feels wrong uh, angles wrong let's try it the other way I mean it doesn't really matter which way I put it on the sign I guess I just want to kind of have a good idea of where I'm putting everything and how it's going in. Which is backwards. Whatever. It's all about the angles, man. There we are. Yeah, that looks better. And then we just take this, you know, and slide it in the bottom. And it's a structural bag. And it does appear that the same dimensions work. Hey, y'all, it's a bag for my bike. Are you out of me? I did it. And in the time. Um, so I will uh, add three holes that line up with the bike and I will custom to, to the side because I have a feeling that seat is custom and not a manufactured thing. So I can't transfer the holes from one side to the other. I'm going to have to, you know, line it up and mark it. Um, it's waterproof. So there'll be little holes, but I'm using these uh, rubber seals. Uh, to, to seal around it. I use a nylon and the metal washer. Um, and it's, I, I mean, I haven't tested it like by spraying it with the hose or whatever, cause I don't need to. It's just, cause I don't have any other better ideas to make this waterproof other than making like a whole cover for it, which people do. Um, I could do that, make an elastic cover kind of thing that just, and then it would be pretty water sealed in. Um, so that, that is an option, but, um, Uh, this corner is staying up better, so I must have done something right sewing it. Um, much, much, much stiffer, much better. Uh, and so now I weatherproof it, uh, which I will begin for the next 15 minutes or so before I need to go teach. How's that sound? Um, but I am super excited about this bag. Uh, so, you know, have I, I've, I've tried to show you, I don't think it shows up on camera very well. But, um, you know, this, this herringbone is actually reflective, um, just, you know, in like that high vis stuff. Um, so when headlights hit me, there's this big don't go, you know, horizontal line. And then all the sides and the back, even, even though they won't see that very often, is reflective. So it just sparkles back at them and they're like, ah, something's there. Um, I don't generally ride at night, but it's still a good idea. And if people are riding around with their headlights on, all the better. Please don't run with your headlights on. It does make other people see you, and you might see other things. Burp. Better. 
Um, yeah. So let's uh, weather strip. Let's weather strip because that's what I feel like doing. Um, my iron needs warming up. I'm going to move baby lock off the table. Line her up and plug and unplug the iron. There we are. Let's get her going again. And, um, yeah. Oh, check my messages because I got way too much going on today. Uh, sorry, someone's asking for marketing material and I need to send it to them. Uh, yeah, I got something. I think. I think. Hold on. Mm. Right? Surely I have what I need. file for the thing on Saturday. So I want to give it a moment. No. Ugh. I'm sending marketing material to people right now because I don't know how to use Facebook. There we go. Now we have everything. Okay. Too much going on. I told you. I got too much going on. Okay. Uh, let's, yeah, we, we said we were going to see the seams. Um, so I'm going to pull out my structure, campaigning signs, and flip it inside out. And where did that roll of other weatherproofing, stripping stuff go? I, it just came in last night. Um, so I, it should have been just like brought up with me, but it's going to get out of my pocket. No. Okay. Um, oh, and we got to trim up all the strings too, because those will affect weatherproofing. Oh, maybe I need to like seal those corners and sew them in tightly before I do that. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Oh, I have to trim these up too so that they're parallel. Okay, we're not going to get to the stripping, but we'll get to the, the weather stripping. But we will get to prepping for the water stripping. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, getting all the loose threads away making these things even like that's not even so and it's wider than the weather stripping so it won't do what we need 
Ooh, I almost cut something I didn't want to cut. Okay. Right, just seal that up. Um, that doesn't have to be quite that wide. Keeping these tight um, seam allowances because I need to get that tape on both sides, ultimately. Maybe other people have like thicker weather tape, but I don't. I just got what I could find on the internet. And the first, the, the biggest batch of stuff that I could find didn't work. You saw me working with that. That was so frustrating that it just like melts. And it didn't come with any instructions or anything, so I didn't know how to like fix it. Talk about frustrating. And that's the joy of really sharp scissors. You saw how it was just sliding along the fabric? Yeah, buddy. That's how we want to work. Lining it up. Cool. And then, um, this is going to be interesting. This may just take extra weather, weather taping seams. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tape the seams until I hand sew the pieces so I'm not introducing new holes, but I am prepped for it now. And I have only a few more minutes before I really should pack up to go teach my class. So I'm going to call it a day. Um, it's nice to know that you guys are through me, with me through this journey of creating things that will um, be amazing and go on my bicycle horse, my recumbent. So wonderfulness. Um, what else? What other exciting things can I say? Well, I'm going to be launching rockets today. Um, I'll move that down. Uh, I'm going to be launching rockets today. If you're bored, we're going to be launching at Beach Street School. You can walk by and watch us from the outside the chain link fence. It should be beautiful. It's an amazing day. It's a perfect day for launching rockets. It's going to be so great. Um, if you want to watch that, that's great. It's all air-based, no loud sounds. So those are sensory challenges. Totally good to bring them to watch this. Um, and there's no, you know, fire or anything like that. So I don't have to be insured for that. Um, it should be a delightful time. I'll probably take some videos myself. Um, yeah, and things will explode and probably go about 200 feet in the air. That's my goal. Um, anyways, love you all so much. Peace, love, and science. You know, go do something outside, like for real for real go do something outside because it's too pretty today not to if you're in the manchester new hampshire area but peace love and science all right till next time